Berry Football Club have been expelled from the English Football League, which pretty much means they are no longer a football club. The day had begun, hopefully. Hundreds of volunteers preparing the stadium for what they thought would be Berry's first home game of the season on Saturday. Just last season, Berry were promoted to League One. Now they become the first FA Cup winning team to be expelled from the Football League. Today is a sad day for football, English football especially. I can't believe I'm actually saying those words, it's astonishing. Rivalries aside, honestly, I'm so sad to see this club go. Um, to see all those fans, to think that they no longer have a football club, it's so horrible. Greg's has made a billion pounds in sales for the first time in its history. A rare success story amid Britain's high street crisis. This is where it all began. Greg's first shop opened in Gosforth in Newcastle 68 years ago. The company has gone on to conquer Britain. From its roots in the northeast, Greg's expanded steadily. Initially a family business, the company listed on the stock market in 1984. Greg's made its name producing bread and cakes, but its recent success owes more to the sausage roll. Today, Greggs has more shops in Britain than either McDonald's or Starbucks and says it may launch abroad in the years to come. At a time when many of the big high street names are struggling, this one is on a roll. Good afternoon and welcome to Bake News. I'm James Richardson. Our top story tonight. High Street food company Greggs have decided to purchase the stadium of former EFL side Berry FC. Gig Lane was put up for sale last week by Steve Dale and the administrators of Berry FC after they were expelled from the Football League in 2019 and have still yet to find an owner. Greggs have confirmed that they will be forming a team which will play in the seventh tier of English football and will be called AFC Greggs. They have also purchased local club Radcliffe FC and their ground Stainton Park and will turn both stadiums into a state-of-the-art place for football to grow in years to come. Gig Lane has been renamed The Bakery and will receive immediate investment to get it ready for the new season. Stainton Park will become the club's new youth and training facilities and will be renamed The Mixing Bowl to represent the company's long history. Chief Executive Roger Whiteside OBE will take the role of chairman along with the rest of the board at Greggs PLC and he spoke to us about his plans for the future of AFC Greggs. We came to the conclusion that the take-home bakery market, which is where we built our business, that was a business, a market that was shrinking. So I said, okay, well, let's, re, let's completely transform this business to focus entirely on that mission and that mission only. The new manager of the team is yet to be confirmed, but rumours of The Steak Bake, a Twitch streamer and YouTuber who has been spotted outside the club this morning. Mr. Bake is yet to make a comment. Ooh. Does seem we've got news just in. We can actually go live over right now to the bakery and uh, there is going to be a press conference to reveal the new manager right now. Over to them. Good afternoon and welcome to the first AFC Greg's press conference. Thank you all for turning up. Uh, obviously it's a big deal. Brand new club and of course brand new manager in myself. I'm delighted to be taking over. We're going to be taking questions from the floor. So uh, yeah, um, you. Welcome to the club. How excited are you to be here? Yeah, I'm absolutely delighted. It's an absolute dream come true to get into management. And uh, yeah, I think uh, what Greg's have on offer is certainly going to be something that everyone should look out for. Um, I think I can bring good things to the table. Interesting football. I have acres of experience as a manager on Football Manager. So, you know, as people know, if, you, if you're on Twitter, if you play Football Manager, you know everything about football. And of course you're going to be a successful manager. So I think I've got everything and I think I'm going to have a great time here. Uh, you. What style of player can we expect this season? Style of play. Um, I'm going to aim to play attractive football. I'm going to aim to develop players through the youth. Uh, Greg's uh, have come to me to say that they're really interested in developing this club and the company to bring football from the very foundations all the way up. Um, they're not interested in signing big money players right now. We're not interested in buying the league. We're interested in building something for the future. And I think Greg's got the right thing in mind. So we've invested in the youth. We've invested in the training facilities. We've got the best facilities right now. And uh, it's only going to help us go up the leagues. As for people that think we're buying the league, quite frankly, it's a bit of a joke, isn't it, really? Like, if you're going to look at our budgets, we're going to be the lowest in Tier 7 for wages. We're going to be the lowest in Tier 7 for transfer budget. 
we don't have a team right now we've got to buy a whole entire team with this budget so you know it, it, we're not buying the league at all but uh, there's certainly going to be lots of signings in the first transfer window uh you sir e what's your message to the fans all there message to the fans my message to the fans is to stick with us we're going to be a, a really fun team to watch it's going to be a really fun series and i think you should drop a like and a subscribe on the channel uh, to keep up with what we've got coming it's going to be a really fun series i hope you can get involved starting nice and low with just a couple of hundred followers so far and a couple of hundred uh season ticket holders and hopefully there'll be more in the future uh final question hi there i just thought you looked a little bit like james richardson from bait news um who james Ri from yeah, bait sorry, news I just thought, uh, I, the the, I mean, the bold guy with the rubbish yeah, beard look, just Absolutely, I don't look anything like him. I'm much more handsome, much more suave. I mean, look at this suit. He, he was in a cheap shirt earlier. I was just saying you look very similar. No, uh, what are you on about? Of course I'm not the same guy in just a different jacket and tie. I didn't mean any offence. Um... Jog on. Get out of my press conference room. In fact, you know what? I'm storming out. Wait, no, sorry, Mr. Big. Um... Yeah, that's right, guys. We are starting a brand new series on the channel today. Apologies for my terrible acting, but I thought I'd do a little bit of a fun intro to the new series. This is a series that I want to do several episodes of a week. I want to get it out almost every day. I think five times a week I'm going to try and do it. Um, it's a series that I want to go on for a hundred odd episodes. So I hope you're invested with AFC Greg's right at the start. That's why I did a little intro video where we give a little bit of story backstory to afc gregs as a whole and i really hope you enjoy the videos that we've got coming up so let's get over to football manager and start playing some football with afc gregs our personal team our new team the channel team up the gregs gregs is life let's do this so as you can see here we are and AFC Gregs have hired me, Stake Bait. Yeah, yeah, I know that looks nothing like me really, but it is from my face apparently. So, you know, we'll we'll leave it as it is. Um, let's take a look at what we've got here. So, uh, our media prediction is going to be 21st place. Our reputation is as low as it can be in this division. It's slightly higher than most of the clubs in this division, but lower than the teams in the league above. Um, basically, I figured if you got into the league as a new team with a big company like Greg's behind you then I think you'd have a little bit of rep at the start considering we've taken over Berry and uh, Radcliffe as well Radcliffe who are in this division uh, they're the team that we've removed hence why I've added them as the team that we've taken over um, Berry obviously went out of existence in 2019 and it was very sad but um, Greg's have bought the ground the ground went up for sale about a week ago actually in real life um, from the administrators which i saw as kind of like a, a giving up kind of thing it was them realizing that they're not going to be able to sell this club now that it doesn't have efl status and i hope that berry phoenix who are the team that the fans have formed can afford to buy that stadium i really hope that's what happens and then berry phoenix become the team that uh go through but for now with our story it's going to be afc gregs um you can see our kit here i will show you them in a little bit more detail in a second as you can see we don't have a team that's kind of a problem a little bit but all the same fun you know we're gonna we're gonna build an entire team we don't have any cult heroes yet we'll make them here at gregs we will make them um so let's have a look uh develop players using the club's youth system i put that as a really high thing the only thing that gregs have set aside from everyone else is we have really really good youth facilities um so everything else is kind of like right for our league our budgets our uh, transfer budget our uh, wage budget this the contracts are based on other teams in the league so like whether they're part-time or full-time we're still a semi-professional club but um yeah um we've left our youth team as something that greg's have invested so greg's bought the club greg's invested money in the youth team and the stadium and that's all they've invested money into apart from that we've got a bit of money in the pot i think we've got fifty thousand in the pot but that's just like a injection at the start and after that, that's not our transfer budget. Our transfer budget is £1,000. So, you know, it, it, it's not it's not unbelievably stupid stuff. Right. 
Uh, we'd like to schedule a press conference. We'd like to arrange an inter-squad friendly. And we'd like to get a backroom staff report. So here we are then. Here is the steak bake. Let's go straight and look at AFC Greg's. And here is our beautiful kit. Um, I, my head's a little bit in the way. But I'll bring them up big on the screen maybe if I remember. Um, beautiful kits. I think they're pretty nice. I designed them myself. Uh, and the badge I designed myself. I'm not I'm not much of a, a vector artist. And I, I did the sausage rolls I definitely didn't draw. Um, but um, yeah, if we look at it, like I didn't draw these lovely sausage roll designs, unfortunately. Um, it's given us a rather weird, weird badge in the league, but we will take it. So this is the league that we are up against. Um, so I've set FC United of Manchester as our rivals because they're quite a local close club. Also, because Man United and Man City, even though they're just down the road from Bury, didn't help with Bury at all, I have also made them rivals as well. So when we get a little bit higher, our rivals are uh, those. Uh, let's take a look at the club information then. So yeah, it's, it's literally just me and a couple of um, staff members who are significant to the channel. Um, so we've got our board. The board are actually the real life board of, of Greg's. PLC. So um, Ian Durant, Roger Whiteside, who you saw in the video, that's actually the guy from Greg's. I thought I found a little bit of stock footage, or not stock footage, it's from ITV. Hopefully they don't copyright claim me. If they do, then this video makes no money and it won't go in the intro, but whatever. Uh, Richard Hutton, Mohamed Al Saki, Kate Ferry, Helena Ganchakowski, Peter McPhillips, Sandra Turner, and Jonathan Jowett. They are the current board of Greg's PLC. Uh, I'm the manager, Luke Burke, who is my mod on my Twitch channel. He is here. Uh, Harris Viz, Visualizer, a uh, good friend of the channel. He's my goalkeeping coach. Luke Williams, uh, a friend of mine as well, uh, is a fitness coach. Steve is a, a, another streamer. Uh, Jack Peachman is Work the Space, uh, who raided me the other day. Really appreciate that. And then we've got Zealand Shannon and ben, ben Carr, who are obviously Dr. Benji and Zealand, who are big FM streamers. And then Michael Bell is another physio who uh, is another friend of mine so yeah we've got a few significant names in there perhaps we'll get some uh, subscriber and uh, fans in there later on um but yeah this is just a bit of an intro to the club before we start the actual episodes i think i'm going to put out two episodes today this episode where we introduce the club and then the, the first transfer episode so i'm going to spend a couple of hours now trying to build up a team i don't think you need to see all of it i'm going to give you like a rundown of who we've got how the transfers went whether it's going well. I've done this before where I've tried to build a club right before the start of the season and it's not gone well. I'm going to be creating a tactic as well. I think I'll do that. Shall I do that on camera? Yeah, let's do that on camera. We'll create our own style. My basic plan is to go for a sort of diamond formation that's wider. So if we look at this kind of formation, this is kind of what I'm going to go for. I'm thinking wingers probably on this side. Wingers on this side. I think in this league, you've got to be a little bit direct. So you've got to have probably probably a target man. And a target man attack, actually, which is an interesting position. I've used it a couple of times at Football Manager. Works really well sometimes, especially when paired with the advanced forward. Sometimes they can knock it down and knock it on. And equally, if you can get a pretty big target man, then uh, useful from corners and stuff as well. Um, just playing these as central defenders is fine. I'm going to play these as... Maybe inverted wing backs, but probably just wing backs. Um, wing backs on support. These guys will be on support, which will allow the wing backs to bomb past them if they need to. But a lot will be expected of these wingers. Um, and then we wanted probably an attacking midfielder. Um, sits in the hole rather than getting into the box. Yes, that's what I want. And then probably this is going to be a deep lying playmaker. So he's going to pick the ball up. He's going to chuck the ball over the top or chuck the ball out to the wings. We'll allow these players to go forward, and that's the kind of general gist. Now, a little bit. Sweeper keeper defends an interesting role because sweeper keeper implies running out, and then defend implies that he's not. It's a role I've used before to some good effect in the lower leagues, less effective as you go higher up. So we will uh, do that. We're going to be positive. Uh, we are going to keep fairly wide, but we're not going to do anything specific. Um, we're going to focus play down the left and right, I think. Um, and we're going to get quick crosses. It depends how tall our striker is on what we do for crosses there. Happy to play for set pieces. I have a couple of set piece tactics in mind. Um, we're going to play with slightly more direct and slightly higher tempo. 
In fact, you know what? We're going to play standard. I'll give individual player things where I allow them to certain players to kick the ball over the top, but I don't want, for example, the left and right back just to boot the ball over the top. I want them to run with it. So I'll leave it standard for now and then come back to that when we come into the individual player tactics. Uh, we don't want to work the ball into the box because then we won't ever get any shots. Um, I'm quite happy for us to run a defence. Uh, that's fine. We don't need any more stuff there. We never need to time waste. Uh, in here, we need to counter and counter press. We're going to distribute to target man and use long kicks. That keeps the ball down the field. The amount of times that I've seen it in lower leagues where the goalkeeper tries to pass it out and ends up losing the ball, you know, we'll avoid that. We'll avoid that there. Uh, we want to distribute quickly. In fact, do we want to distribute quickly? No, we want to wait until he's in position. Uh, and then I want a higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line. If we can get players in the centre-back role, certainly in these lower leagues, with high pace, we're, we're, we're Gucci, we're golden. Definitely get stuck in. Definitely use tight marking. I'm going to press. I'm going to press, I think, in this league. Yes, my intensity is very high. Might get a lot of injuries. Hopefully, we'll have some squad depth, though, once I've gone through these transfers. So uh, we'll look at that. We're not going to use the offside trap yet because it's not very well done in this league. And if we need to, we can drop it down to uh, standard. So what I'll have is I'll have a, a balanced version of this formation with this drop down to standard and uh, less time marking, more offside trappy kind of stuff. So um, that is how we will do that. That is going to be our tactic to start with. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to buy for this tactic. And then I'm also going to buy for 442, I think. Maybe 4231. So I need to get a DM in. I need to get a couple of DMs. I need two people in every position. So let's um, get into buying and loaning 22, 24 players. Let's go. Right, so I've already recorded this clip and completely mucked it up because I did everything behind my head is the ca in the camera, which was good. So I was doing this and then the player's stats were popping up right behind my face quality youtuber so we're going to do this bit again so we'll go through the transfers uh in here as you can see i've made quite a few here we have made about 31 transfers here and some of them are better than others we're going to go through some of the key ones and then we'll look at the team and how we're going to line up and that kind of thing um so one of the players that we're going to look at is josh oyinsan who is our star player currently now, he was the last transfer I made, and I didn't know if I was going to make it or not, because that £400 per week wage right up there is double anyone else in the team. I think 250 is my other highest, so it's just, just under double. So it's a big wage, and he's on good goals per game and that kind of thing, um, money as well. But his stats don't really lie, and there is a position on this pitch, target man support, that I really needed in this team. And so we've got a six foot five guy with 13 strength. I, I've changed the stats, by the way, so you can kind of see which areas they're good at. Anything over 10 in this league is really good. The kind of seven, eight, nine is probably about average. And then six, five or six is like normal. Anything lower than that is a problem. So we're looking at this guy here. And uh, Joshi Yinsan is, he's certainly going to be that... Uh, tall big target man that's going to win flick on headers hopefully win a few other headers as well his work rate's 10 which is pretty good he's off the balls 12 so he's going to get in the right positions although his positioning is not great we could do with a little bit more there and a little bit more teamwork as well if possible that's what i'm going to train him on but yeah he he costs nothing but is an expensive transfer for our wage budget so let's go back uh to down here we also signed uh henok mckendy and Vinny McKendy, and they are brothers. They're not particularly good, either of them. Neither of them are standout players. However, Henock has been doing pretty well in the pre-seasons, which we'll get to in just a little bit. He's got a couple of goals in the last game. Uh, his brother Vinny hasn't really played quite as much, but you'll notice that Vinny is six foot seven, and his brother is six foot four. Huge guys, uh, and Vinny can play on the left wing if we need to have him there. He can also play as a pressing forward. We're pretty happy with that. He's just a kind of bulk-out player, and 
I was looking for players over six foot four and two people with the same surname were right next to each other. And I thought, you know what, let's get the brothers in. The McKendy brothers, welcome to the team from Democratic Republic of Congo. Who else have we got? We have uh, Donny Longa Longa, who I literally just signed because he has a great surname. But actually, he might play a role in the team this season. He plays at right back. and um, That's where I'm going to play him. So we're looking at this uh, probably wing back position if we highlight it here. So he's got good pace and good acceleration and things like that. His crossing is, is okay. His tackling is okay. His work rate is very good. I'd like to do some more with his strength, but apart from that, he is very good. Again, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, who else have we got? Now, here's a player that I didn't sign because I thought he was going to be amazing now. I thought he was going to be amazing later. Um, Alfie Colburn. And here is why I have now promoted him into the first position in this team at CAM. Throw through them here. It's Coburn, who picks up the ball here and then smashes it across the keeper here. Pretty good goal. And then he does it again later on. Tommy Longer Longer, Malice on the wing. Gets the ball to Coburn. Oh, it's unbelievable goals. So yeah, as you can see, he can score a screamer and is not afraid to do so. That determination, that flair, that decision, the leadership, the stats are really good across the board here and this guy could very much improve later on and I could see him being in our team 16 years old 16 years old new gen that face will change I'm going to get a new face pack where it will look like a more realistic face generated which is a really cool feature from FM base I'll leave a link to it in the description um and Zealand as well he's 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 so good he's so good I'm really happy with this signing I think he is going to play for this team for a few years he could be the one that you get on the back of your Greg shirt when they come out if I ever do that um, yeah, Alfie Colburn, definitely one to look out for. And at the same time, I also signed, is it Sam Hurst? Yes, Sam Hurst, who is a winger, who is also 16 years old. Both were recommended to me at the same time. Good pace, decent crossing, decent dribbling, decent technique and work rate. He'll probably be in and around the first team as well. Who else we got? We paid money for... Uh, Chukwudalu Malokwu, I think I am saying that correctly, apologies if I butchered his name, but this 17 year old cost me £150, which is excruciating money from, uh, I think it's Geisley, but it says Wakefield on there, yeah it was Geisley, so he must have been on loan at Wakefield, um, 6 foot 5, good strength, really good physical stats, can head, can mark he can even pass which means potentially he could play a ball playing defender role if we could convert him into that position if you look at the stats across the board there he's pretty good at that i will leave him no nonsense for now or maybe probably just central defender for now um he's been doing well in pre-season good signing i think another one that we could potentially keep going and malokwu could be here for a few seasons uh, who else are we going to look at as a particularly good player? Noman Malas. Now, this is our current attacking advanced forward uh, position. Good pace, six foot, good stamina. He's got a good first touch. First touch really important when you're playing someone over... This is potentially someone who's going to be playing the ball over the top. Once his first touch is really good, he can get the ball under his control and shoot and score. He's been doing really well for us so far i'm worried a little bit about his finishing and composure but that's not why i signed him i signed him because of his first touch because of his heading because of his determination flare off the ball that kind of thing i think he's going to be a good player and he has been our highest scorer in the pre-season so far so let's just have a look at our pre-season games they've been mixed some encouraging performances against bigger sides some really encouraging performances against bigger sides an iffy one against a side who are either in the same level as us or the tier below and then a couple of good wins against teams in and around us. So we'll start with Derby because that was when the team, like this great Gateshead friendly, these are all pretend players that were made up. We didn't have a team for that friendly or the um, intra squad. Derby was the first game where we actually had some players. I still don't think we had all of them. I think Matthew Harris is fake. I think there's a couple of fake guys in there, but it was an okay performance. They dominated us. They won the game. We didn't let it get too out of hand. I'm okay with it. Bolton. We nearly beat Bolton. Football League Bolton. League One Bolton. We nearly beat them. Um, we did really well. We scored the goal early on in the first uh, in the second half. And then they scored the 90 plus 4 to equalise it. And we were not the better team, but we were definitely in that game much more. Weren't really in the game against Portsmouth. 2-1 defeat, but Molasses. Uh, Molasses. I'm going to keep calling him Molasses. It's Molasses. Um, or Malice. Malice. Oh, I like that. He's got a bit of malice about him. Yeah. Um, 
no molass. No molass? No man malice. <laughs> Goodness sake. I'm going to struggle with that. Um, got the goal. Good goal early on as well. Nice ball through the middle. Uh, Mosley. This is the disappointing game because they're in the league or the tier below us and we've lost 3-1 here. Not great. We didn't play very well either. We did rotate for fitness reasons, but, you know, not particularly happy. And then we smashed Baller away from home. Um, Malas getting a goal. Coburn, those two goals that I showed you earlier were in this game. And uh, McKendy, uh, Henock McKendy, got two in that one. And then Malas got another goal in the most recent friendly. And that is where we have it so far. So this is kind of how we're going to line up. Uh, Ayin San's only just signed, so he hasn't played any games yet. Um, so I'll be interested to see if he can do the target man role um, that McKendy was doing. I think a few players will drop into our development centre. We've got uh, just the one in there right now, Ellis Williamson. Um, but yeah, there's some good players in this team. Oh, Healy. I didn't mention Healy. Healy is our central defensive midfielder, and he is the best player in the team, stats-wise. Love this guy. Looks really good so far as well. Going to be useful to us all season. Those mental stats are really good. Physical's pretty good. Would like to see a little bit of improvement on the technicals, but at this level, the technicals don't matter quite as much. Um, so yeah, we will uh, like to see what he can offer us. And his his uh, backup player, uh, where is he? Where is he? Jack Holmes is also pretty good as well. That's behind my face, isn't it? Jack Holmes, he's pretty good as well. Not quite as good um, as Healy, but you know. We've got that. So our team is coming along nicely. Patience as well. I think we'll just have a quick look at patience because there is a reason why I bought this guy in. Corners and free kicks both at 10. Now, I searched for free transfer players with free kicks or corners above 8 and he was the only player that came up. Both of I wanted both. I want both corners and free kicks. So he's a good player. Good acceleration, good pace, good stamina, good strength. 5 at 10. I like that. A good off the ball. Good vision. The vision's really key here. Uh, technique is really key here. Good crossing, which will be improved. That's what I'm going to train him on. But corners and free kicks is what I really wanted here because in this league, you get a lot of free kicks. You get a lot of corners. We've got some big guys as well, so we can utilize those. We're going to be bolting balls. Bolting? We're going to be smashing balls into the penalty area all the time. And this guy, Neil Patience from Scotland, is going to be the guy. Five pounds a week as well because he's 20. Bargain. So the team's looking pretty good. I'd definitely be looking out for Malice, Ayinson, Coburn, Patience, um, Healy, Malokwu as the key players for this team. Laird's pretty good as well, the centre-back who's playing alongside Malokwu. I would like a left-sided centre-back if I can find one. Can't find one so far. So until then, Laird is going to play there and probably struggle a little bit, but... We, we deal with it both of our center backs are six foot six foot six foot two six foot five i think so and so are the backups so that is how we have done so far on the team we're getting to the end of the friendlies now and that is when we will bring in the next episode that is going to be the end of this episode thank you very much for watching guys make sure you leave a like and support the video as much as you can i really want to make this a really good series on the channel i really want to grow it with the channel and hope i can get some of you uh, newbies to come in and watch the video and have a good time with afc gregs while we're here make some cult heroes that kind of thing so i'd really appreciate if you could like the video subscribe all of that good stuff uh, all the links are in the description for my socials, Twitter, Instagram, and my Twitch channel as well, which I stream on three times a week for like four hours at a time. That's like 60 hours of channel streaming per month, which is, you know, some good stuff worth subscribing, worth following for, surely. Please. Thank you. Please. Perfect. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one tomorrow.